Hi guys, McKenna here, stitching in sequins or a gray t-shirt today. Hope you guys have been well. It's been a while for me. Um, lots to talk to you about today. As usual, everyone says on all their videos. So let's just jump right into it. I will leave a sort of life update, I guess, towards the end. But what have I been stitching on lately? Um, so it's been about a month, I think, since I've done a video and I've touched quite a few whips and I have started some new stuff as well. One of them being a new 1884 release, which I'll get into later. Okay, so, um, let's have finishes. Love this piece. Um, I was going to take it with me on vacation, which I'll talk about later as well, but decided that with being 40 count, I probably shouldn't take it with me. Um, the plane ride was about seven hours. I've done 40 count. <sighs> Nap time. I've done 40 count on the plane before. And it's not as easy as in when just sitting in like a chair that doesn't move. This is from Cory Ibatacor. Um, some about friendships and plowing it and seeds and I love it. Um, let's see. There we go. So I am doing this on... 40 count. The fabric is from Crossed Wing. It's called Midnight. Um, it's hand painted specialty fibers, the Cross Wing collection. And I love this design on this fabric. I think it's really, really cool. All the colors pop really well. Um, the fabric is really nice to work with. So I converted this gal here, darker skin tone, which is about my skin tone, but yes, it looks dark. I definitely have gotten darker coming back from vacation. Um, and then I changed her hair to black. So I have another girl to do as well. Mirrors it, she's holding it, another vine here and then the writing at the bottom which i will probably stitch in italian so that is something i really like working on and um being 40 count one thread simple easy um also, there's not very many colors in that, so that's a nice project to work on. Ooh. Another project that I... I did take this one on vacation. It smells like vacation. This is Not Forgotten Farm. Old, old Wick Burying Ground photo on it is horrible because you don't see all the little details um, but there's a whole like fence and details in so I really wanted to do it on a piece of colored fabric you guys know if you've watched me the last few months I have been super obsessed with stitching stuff on colored fabric because if you have the colored fabric use it it adds such a pop um, to your piece especially if the colors are really really neutral um but even not it just adds something it makes it just a little different and i'm all about being different so usually 98 percent of the time i do not measure my fabric 
I kind of eyeball it and think, okay, what's the finish size? And okay, yeah, that looks like it could hold a nine by five stitched area piece. This piece, I clearly didn't actually was a fabric oriented. Ooh, my mistake could have been fabric orient orientation, which now I'm just doing a Michelle. Shit. Oh crap, I just did a Michelle. Damn it. It's BS. That's bad BS. I mean, she's good BS. What I did is bad BS. I wanted it on this sort of purpley pink. It's definitely not what's coming across what I'm seeing. It's more purpley. Um, like a, a raspberry sorbet sort of color. Obviously I orient the wrong direction, but that's okay because I decided I'm going to still stitch it. Um, but the only thing that won't be included is the um, gate along the bottom. So no gate. And then I'll just um, frame this like really, really close this up behind. So old wick varying ground. I think there's only like four, five colors. The tree is actually made up of two colors, um, which gives it really cool detail. And so I've been going in um, and doing like the black and then I just go in and do fill in. I love this um, kind of frame around old wick varying ground. It says there. So that's where I am. So basically bring the tree down. Um, oh, there's a bird. I think that's over here. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So that's been super fun. Um, Salem Hill Sampler. I started this for Emily's um, birthday, Eclectic Possessions. She stitched, she, I don't know if she's finished, I think she is. But this is the one that I picked and she was stitching the same one. And this is where I'm at. So I have the house done and the tree and I'm starting the moon and I am stitching this on 40 count heroic by picture this plus I wanted a colored fabric for this piece um, but I also needed a neutral in a sense to have those colors pop because there are quite quite a few colors um, so I came across heroic and thought it was perfect so great modeling plus little splotches of like this blue vein and there's some like sort of pinky light reds. So um, yeah, I have that. I don't think I'm gonna stitch the whole design. Um, I might just do, yeah, I'm not gonna do this fence part here. Um, I'm gonna definitely shrink it down so when I pull it back out, I will decide on that. I have a whip wheel that I have put together, um, but I haven't been using it since getting back from vacation. So I definitely want to get back to using that. Um, but I have been obsessed lately with um, a start. Did I? start this when I came back from vacation. I think so. Yeah, pretty sure. It's been in my things of wanting to stitch the sun and the moon. This is a um, pattern only, not a kit. The pattern is available on 1884stitchery.com right now. 
um, and just calls for DMC. I have decided to substitute in some Etoile DMC just for some sparkle. And you will see where I put that in. So the sun, okay, so here's where I'm at completely. Love it. I absolutely love this piece. I'm stitching this two over two on 32. Um, working on, um, last night I finished this green area. So I thought, oh, um, I should go back to filling in the clouds. So I love that the clouds, they're outlined plus filled in with two different shades of blue. The sun here, which is in orange etoile, which where would show up? It's like the etoile doesn't show up on camera, but in person you can see it. Maybe a little. So I outlined, I did all of the orange on the moon, on the sun. And I kind of like it as is and not filled in. Um, so I might leave it as is like this. The moon here, I have done outlined this darker. Is it the darker? No. The inside and the outs and the star, which I need to fill in that one. And the outlines of the stars are done in it in a twelve. So there's some highlights parts on the moon. And the outline of the stars are done in silver a twelve. Again, the moon is supposed to be filled in in the sun, but I think I like it as is. The sun reminds me of the big giant sun that's on Small World at Disneyland. Um, that's what it reminds me of. This lower section with flowers and fruit was really, really fun. And then you can see the ground landscape part. Now at this bottom section, and some of this is folded over, is like water and some fish. So that will be the last part that I do. Um, but I definitely want to finish up the clouds. But yeah, that sun and that moon are solidly stitched. But I think I like how I'm doing it. So, yeah. So there is Sun and the Moon from Alforest Embroidery, available on 1884 Stitchery. So that is what currently um, I have been working on. Um, and I've been wanting to start something new. Um, so yesterday, um, Dina Deanne, I think it's Dina, from Darlene and Whimsy Designs. Um, I will link her Etsy store. Making myself a note. Let's see, Link. She is coming out with, I don't know how many are in this perennial potions series, but I freaking love them. Um, last month, or it wasn't last month, maybe it was, I won the horn book that you stitch Belladonna on and you frame it onto the horn book. I won the horn book. So... Yesterday, I thought, oh, I want a new start. Let's do Belladonna. Because over the weekend, she released her next one in the series. Completely blanking. Um, but I thought, how cool are these? Stitch these all on the same fabric, finish them the same way, and hang them up in my medical bathroom. Which I have not forgotten. I need to make a new... Um, video, I need to whip Joe to put 
shelf up though. Um, and then I will be doing a tour of my medical bathroom. So four, five DMC colors, two general arts and a week's. I wanted to do it the same size. So when I frame one of them on the horn book, which fingers crossed, she comes out with a foxglove one. Um, then I can set it right next to my foxglove um, box of it. I have a box of fox foxglove that a viewer sent me um, that I have displayed in a glass little box. I put them next to each other. So I pulled the threads for the design. Really, really cool. And I don't know if my, well, let's just say, I don't know if your guys' threads or fabric get it on because you put them together and you're like, holy crap, I have a ton of thread. I think they're procreating. And I have my fabric in 12 by 12 scrapbook paper containers. And I pulled out the 30 count and 32 count one bin. And I don't know where I got this huge ass piece 32 count navy bean. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm just happy I have enough fabric to do however many are in her series. And I don't have to worry about tracking down fabric or dye lock with fabric issues. I have it all. So, this is ready and I will throw this Belladonna perennial potion part on my whip wheel. I need to update that. Um, but my new start that I started yesterday, I will show shortly. I have two finishes. Um, that I got done on vacation, but I don't think I showed you these other ones. So I have four finishes to show you. So I either have two or I have four. All right. One that I finished long ago. This is from Midsummer Night Designs, Medieval Mermaid Dunzo. Finished it. I stitched this on 40 count purely primitive from Silk Weaver. Um, I picked this piece up when I was in New Jersey. The Silk Del Soie slate. So I love the hint of variegation it gave to this piece. And you're like, McKenna, it's not framed up. What's going on? I went through my wall of frames and or my closet of frames and I don't have anything. And with thrift stores, not being considered a necessity, they are closed. So when thrift stores open again, I will probably get a ton of frame selection because people are going through their house and de-stashing and organizing their shit. So doing frames is on my list when I can go back out. If the thrift stores were open now, I would totally go because, you know, no one would be there. But that's not an option. My other finish. Queenstown Sampler Designs, Mexican Sampler, circa 1850. I bought this a couple years ago and I loved it for its wackiness. And the colors, I don't know. I grew up um, 
going down to Mexico, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta. Um, we would rent a car and we would drive around the peninsula. I mean, probably can't do that shit now, um, but have gone to numerous, numerous ruins. Um, and so when I saw that, it kind of reminded me of all the travels that we had done down there. And I got it done. Let's see if I have it written. 36, 36 count coconut. Um, and again, do not have a frame. And these are the called four colors. This peachy color, a dark blue, and lighter blue. So three colors, and that is it. Um, but when I first opened up the chart to read through the directions, some of the stitches are blended threads. And a great example of seeing that is, okay, let's go on this bird thing. So you can see the bird is dark, but it is actually made up of one strand of dark and one strand of light. Here on the wing, one strand of the blue, one strand of the peach. Um, you can see it in the basket from the dark to the peach is really, really nice. Uh, that bird there has blue and peach. Um, but yeah, I love how, how this turned out. Really fun. It was actually really quick. Um, And I like that I did it sort of on, I didn't want to do it on white. I think white looks too stark with some, de with all designs. I think white is too stark. Um, so this being kind of a coconut, dirty-ish white, um, I think worked really, really well. The next finish I got um, done while on vacation. I was trying to finish it on the plane ride over to Hawaii, um, but the plane was so cold. I just wanted to sleep. So when I get cold, college classes, I remember I would do everything to try to stay awake because the rooms were cold. And for some reason that just keeps me awake. Most people would keep them awake. No, it puts me to sleep. So, cause I thought, oh, I'll try to have like a Pacific ocean finish and I'll have, I'll stand up and hold it up and Joe would take a picture of me in front of, on, on, on the plane. No, didn't finish it. I was so close though. So I took Jenny Bean Halloween from Shakespeare's Peddler and finished it. The border all the way around I subbed in DMC Etoile Black. Um, now when this was originally released, you could buy the thread pack. The thread pack is highly coveted these days. Um, but when you buy the chart, you get a DMC or gassed weeks closest conversion. Um, if you look at the photo of this, and it's absolutely horrible, um, because it does not show, as you can see here, the letters, the alphabet, are all multicolored. Well, maybe this picture, this picture probably was taken with the called for threads, like the thread pack. Those colors are definitely not multicolored. Those letters are not multicolored. I freaking love it that they're multicolored. The house, the, tr the weeping willow, the writing. I love how this turned out. Um, and again, I need to look in my frames if I have a frame that will fit this, but I definitely want something 
very tight. Um, but yeah, so that's Jenny Bean Halloween. And then while I'm standing, I started and finished this while in Hawaii. I think. No, I started it before. In her garden. This is from Lucy Beam. And this is in her garden. I picked this up at Needleworkers Delight in New Jersey. I thought she was super cute. And hot damn, I was right. So in her garden, and yes, you can see totally carry my threads, but once I have it framed up, you won't see. Um, changed her skin tone, changed her hair, I believe. And then her dress are all long um, stitches. Some cover two threads, some color, cover four. So I, that was really cool to work on. The little bees, the flowers. Just really, really sweet. So I need to finish this up and set this out in my kitchen. So yeah. So if you've, saw the Mexican sampler and Medieval Mermaid, then those are repeats. But if you haven't, I can't remember if I showed them in my last video, then yes, I've been crazy busy stitching. Um, I bought exactly two patterns from the market. show them. The one that was an absolute yes. Ink Circles, the queen that was. Love this. Love it on the dark fabric. I will definitely be doing it on dark fabric. So that was a yes. And then from my girlfriend Michelle, Bendy Stitchy, this is the Rolodex Morning Sampler. And that was a yes. And that was all that I bought from Market. Um, so that's what I've been stitching on. What I want to stitch. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So a couple new starts in the future. Um, I think that is it, 1884. Let's talk 1884 stitchery. I got, a couple months ago, a large order of fabric from this woman, Catherine, who lives in Russia, and she hand dyes and hand paints motifs onto fabric. You can only get her fabric through sort of like this Facebook Russian website, um, but I contacted her directly, hunted her down, um, used an interpreter to talk to her. And I said, love your fabric, I want to sell them. So she made one order for me and I got them. Um, and that's what's up that first round of fabric. Then I said, hey, I want a second round of fabric. And that was like later in the year, later last year, late last year. Um, and she shipped it out sometime in January. Well, they've been sitting here in my office and I thought they are doing no good sitting in my office because I've already paid for them. So let's get them out to the people. I hadn't fully looked through all of them. I snagged two, I kept two of them out of, gosh, I don't know how many pieces I was sent. A lot. Um, 60 pieces, 70 pieces. So I'm gonna show you the two that I kept just to give you an idea of 
these fabrics. So only available on 1884stitchery.com. You go up to the tab to expand more and click on fabrics from by fabrics by Catherine. Um, so this is a 28 count. I have different counts. I even have some 40s, I believe, left. Um, this motif, though, I only got two of. The one had already sold. So you can see it's this gorgeous blue, green. And then the motif that she paints is this. Pin cushion, some needles, and ball and then the spool with the flower. These fabrics are not stiff. The motifs do not come off at all, and this is soft. So if you have stitched on some of that polka dot fabric, you can feel those, those dots that are on the fabric, and if you need to put your needle through one of those dots, it can be kind of a pain. This, completely soft. Now, you wouldn't be stitching over this motif but there are some motifs on her fabric you could definitely stitch over but they are not stiff or hard whatsoever so this is um, one of the pieces that I kept and this is a piece of 40 count that I kept loved this modeling on it and I loved this very delicate rose design that is painted. And as you can see, the stem here, it's just not one color. You can see it's highlighted with pinks and green. These leaves have two, three different colors. So again, 40 count, super soft. All of the fabrics are so go check out fabrics by Catherine on 1884. Next, um, what goes into things I purchased? What else is new on 1884? I've uplate, uploaded new uh, charts in the two dollar chart section. Um, with the whole coronavirus thing going off, Al Forest is not shipping out any more orders. Um, so the kits and the patterns that I have in stock, um, is what I have. So I definitely plan on making another order when the board is, um, but I still have quite a few um, kits available, absolutely gorgeous kits. If you've never tried one, try an Al Forest embroidery kit. Um, and during all of this sort of world chaos, I am still shipping. I'm trying to get shipping out within 24 hours. So I really pride myself on that um, because a lot of stores don't. Um, and so one woman show here. I'm definitely no Amazon. You don't get Prime with me. Um, but not bad if I can get this sh stuff shipped off to you within 24 hours. I have put up a ton of um, threads and more threads will be going up under the charity tab on 1884. Um, Half of the sales will be going to projectcure.org. I will leave a link down below so you can check out that organization. Fantastic organization. Um, and something like $92, $93 of every $100 spent they are able to use. So the administration fees that they keep is very, very low, which I absolutely love. Um, but I got... A ton of Belsois silks listed over the weekend. You guys went absolutely crazy for them. And all the Belsois silks that I have left, this is it. This is it. Okay. And guess what? What's left? I don't have any more.
more. Um, I am selling these for four seventy five each. Absolutely crazy seeing that you cannot touch Belle Soie silks in an LNS for four seventy five. Um, I also have some large lots of thread, um, gassed, I believe. Um, and then I have begun today uploading the threads that I have all from Weeks Dye Works. So, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get through posting all of those today, but definitely tomorrow I'll be working on that. So all these threads, I'm uploading a ton of stuff. A lot of it will be going under the charity tab, half of all sales going to projectcure.org um, or .com. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's it. Oh, I have another finish. I'm looking at it. Another finish. I recorded this finish live on YouTube. This is my uh, design. This is called, we'll try this. It's called Shadows. I knew that it needed to be burnt on the edges, just like my Devil's Runs piece. So I burnt it. I did a live video and showed you guys um, and I meant to save it because a lot of you guys had messaged me looking for it. Um, but the next piece that I burnt, I'll record it and then put it up here on my channel. I love how hell came out. I got the burning super, super close. And then this fabric that you can see that is still burnt. Love it. So this is Shadows available on my website as either a hard copy or as a PDF. Shadows in the morning mist, phantoms in the fog, echoes in the murky light that bounce around the bog. From the chasms in my mind where darker creatures dwell, I looked into the deep abyss and caught a glimpse of hell. Now I just need Joe to hang out. But I don't know where, because I'm running out of box space. I think I need my own house. Okay, let's see. 1984. Let's talk about my new release that I am releasing today. It is not available right now as I speak, but as this video is uploading, I will be uploading it to 1884. I love this design. Something very different from Shadows. Um, and maybe some people would even say very un-McKenna in a way. Um, but I love how it turned out. This was, let me find the... So, I came across this Victorian beaded tray, like a tea tray. Um, and it was not cross-stitched, it was all beads, and I loved it. Um, so I give you the birds and the roses from 1884 Designs. And this was my new start last night. And I will show you where I'm at. I actually already effed up, so I will be um, taking out those X's and fixing them. I believe I was talking to Joe or the boys when I was doing this, so I can totally see. Usually I don't need to take out stitches. It's very rare for me to have to do that. Um, I don't grid my work. I don't do any of that. So when I find that I have messed up on a pattern due to counting errors, it's very different for me. So here is my very small, meager start. I am starting with the bird in the middle of the design. 
and I have decided to stitch this on 25 count. 25 count. Dark cobblestone Lugana. Uh, because all the colors, I definitely wanted to do it on a colored fabric, not a cream or anything, because there are colors that I definitely want to be seen. And there is some white in this. Um, Arlene helped me as always with um, project or pattern. She puts her fancy touch on all of it. Um, and so when she was showing me the design, um, she changed the background to darker and I love this. So I knew that I definitely needed to stitch it on, not a white color. I was actually thinking of chopping off some of the Havana that I'm using for my LDS. Um, but when I looked through my stash, I saw this dark cobblestone and fell in love with it. So this was just a really quick little start last night. So I will fix my mistake. I know where it's at and I will get back to it. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys like it too and I will make it available in PDF and hard copy. And this is in my Christine Stitch All of the Things um, charity bag that I won off of Bendy Stitchy and paid a lot for it. That's okay. It was charity. I think that covers all 1884 stuff. Yes. Looking around. All right. So a little life update, shall we? Nothing going on here stuck at home. Check on your extroverts, people. You're dying with this. Um, my girlfriend, Jenny, my ride or die, BFF, we have member matching heart tattoos. Um, she was supposed to be in Spain already teaching English. Um, she sold her house, sold all the stuff in her house, and it was basically four suitcases, some odds and ends, and her dog and herself. Um, but with this whole coronavirus thing, that got shut down real quick. Um, um, oh, and her car. So I invited her to stay with us. So she stayed here the week that we were in Hawaii, and she took care of Wally and Irwin, um, both of which get along with her little dog, Lily. Um, and she, yeah, stayed here and did, wasn't, sh well, I think she knew, she knew by then she wasn't going to be leaving. Um, and I, when we got back, we said, you're more than welcome to stay, um, because her house had already sold, um, she was already had been schlepping it with grandma and grandma was kind of getting on her nerves. Um, you needed a break. When you're together with someone for a long time, I think after a while you kind of need a break. So I said, come and live with us and you can continue staying with us after we get back from vacation. And it has worked out super, super well. We're like this big old polygamous family. <sighs> I think if we had a pet tiger, Joe would feed me to the tiger instead of the other way around. I don't know who's going to make out make it out alive when this whole thing is said and done. Not really sure. Or if a divorce papers will be served. Not sure. Um, but no, it's been it's been fun having her here and the boys adore her. Um, and so yeah, so it's five of us here and um our you know we're very used to the both of us of going out and we haven't done that for a long time and it's definitely getting to me um because I'm a social person and with her being here it's like okay let's go out and 
do oh we can't do anything let's travel oh we can't do that i mean we could get to miami for like a hundred dollars but obviously nothing would be open so we scratched all travel plans um but we have plans to travel before she leaves for spain um but otherwise it's hiking grocery store and post office that's where we get our shenanigans on which isn't very exciting because there's no one else to share the shenanigan fun with because people seem to be assholes these days you can't smile in somebody's direction you can't say hi because they're afraid you're gonna infect them um, went to the post office today people were such assholes to the post office employees um, as much as I want to say a lot of people have stepped up and been very nice, there's also a lot of people that have turned really mean and that's really disappointing on um, the human race and how we treat each other. While, so while she was here for a week, we were in Hawaii and it was definitely before the whole craziness ensued. Um, so we left, what, I think we've been back three weeks now. We went from the, coming back, 16th to the 23rd, um, had a fabulous time, went to Oahu, gorgeous. Um, stayed at the same hotel that I grew up going to with my parents. Um, and the weather rained a couple of the days, gorgeous most of the days. We rented a car one of the days and went around the island and that was really, really fun. The boys had a great time. They absolutely loved it. Um, so it was actually during their spring break when we went um lazy beach days um still went out and got food ate at restaurants um but sometimes we would just kind of walk around the corner and there was a grassy area and we would sit there and eat and I think that's way more fun than being at like a table I think being out um I think it'll just give really good memories to the trip um, especially during the time when things were shut down and we left, um, we didn't have to leave early or anything, but we left the day before they were doing a few day like shutdown. Um, so we were happy to be off the island, back here on mainland at the house, um, because there was a part of us that if we do get stuck over there, then we'll just do like an Airbnb. We had a place to stay. Um, but then it's like, okay, how long are we going to be here? And yeah, it's not the worst place to be, but I didn't bring computer to work on work, you know? So, um, but no, trip was fantastic. Had a great time. Um, my dad one of his final wishes was to have his ashes um, in Hawaii, was to spread them. So I took um, some of my ashes that I have of his. Um, and um, of course he got <laughs> caught through TSA again, um, which is only fitting. Um, he was a distribution manager of a lot of big drink companies um and so he flew all the time um so i thought it was pretty funny that he got stopped by tsa for the last time um and especially going to hawaii so um we had a i was able to find a kahu which is like a minister priest um and did a private ceremony at a beach um, it was actually, yeah, it was at a 
park and the park had like a pier that went out um but obviously no boats came up because it was stacked with rocks on the side i think it was more like a fishing sort of pier um but no side rails no nothing just flat out um i'll add some some pictures here so you get a better understanding gorgeous day um i wanted to do this on the friday um, which was the 20th and that would have been seven months since his passing um, but the weather was not the best was not forecasting to be the best so we moved it to Saturday um, so it was gorgeous ceremony jo um, George Joe recorded it on the GoPro um, I haven't watched it yet um, took photos of which I have not looked at yet either and boys participated and absolutely loved it. Um, Ayrton wore a Hawaiian shirt. I'll add some pictures here if I haven't already. It was perfect. It was gorgeous. Um, I think if he was able to tell me in his words, I think he would have really appreciated it and liked it. Um, so that's going to be something that I always, always, always remember. Uh, there is a cross-stitch store on, play, on my travels. I will go to that cross-stitch store. And I went to, oh, I miss, I'm totally, Fiddlesticks 2, um, right in Honolulu. And I picked up some stuff. So my grandfather, Great grandfather helped build the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Um, sometimes people refer to it as the Pink Palace. Um, it is pink. And he did, well, he was in charge of all of the tile work. So I had never here, staying at the Hilton, like three hotels down, I had never gone into the Royal Hawaiian Hotel to check it out. So the four of us went in and I took photos. Absolutely stunning, gorgeous place. I'll insert photos here. Um, and I just, knowing that a relative, and this can go for anyone, knowing that a relative has gone through a building or been in that same town or a house, something specific. And this relative you've never met, because obviously they died before you were ever alive. I loved that I was able to go into this building, this hotel, and know that my great grandfather had been in the same hotel. Loved that. And that the original tiles that I was looking at he had something to do with. Um, so loved it. And then, you know, being able to tell my boys this as well, and they get to experience that. So had to pick up this when I saw it at the cross stitch store. Um, the view from our hotel out on our balcony, we saw a diamond head. So picked up diamond head and then I'm actually going to stitch this for my mom um, she loves birds of paradise and they had a cute little design and it comes with everything needed so this is what this is what I bought this was how small my little checkout then I saw in the store um, these bags, these paper bags folded over and it said $5 written on them and that the money went to Ronald McDonald house grab bags. And I said, Oh shit. I love me some grab bags. The surprise. So I originally picked up two. Now they were marked like needlework, 
cross stitch. So I picked up two of the cross stitch ones. Well, then I did a video of the place, which I will put at the end of this video. Um, I'll tag it on. I walked back through and I thought, those grab bags are talking to me. So I picked up four more. So if you were lucky enough to see my live IG from my hotel balcony in Hawaii, and you saw me go through all six bags, surprise grab bags, and see what I got. Hands down, the best two charts out of the bags that I bought, and I said this before, I think I even started, wouldn't it be funny if I if there were some mirabilias? Now all of this stuff in the bags, um, I was told by the shop owner, were from donations or like deceased stitchers, and then just kind of divided up. The first mirabilia that I pulled out was La Nouveau Sampler. I don't know anything about these. If they're out of print, if I could sell them for decent money, no idea, but I died laughing. So, because I had thought, wouldn't that be cool if there was a, a mirror or something big in each one? Tiger Lily or something. This was in the first one. Then I opened up the second grab bag and pulled out Crystal Symphony. And I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna get a freaking mirror from these $5 grab bags and I'm gonna give my money back in no time. So that was it. Now I got plenty of other fantastic charts, a mystic stitch, all kinds of, let me just show you, all kinds of um, great magazines. Um, a lot of charts that will be going into the $2 section but like Cross Stitcher Magazine, Cross Stitch Collection. So I need to go through my other wins. Go through the magazines, pull anything if I would stitch it, um, and if not, put it up and sell it. So um, yeah, that was really, really fun. And I came back to the room and carrying these six huge paper bags full of stuff and they were heavy and I had to walk all the way up to the room and Joe opens up because I could hear the boys and so I hit the door with my foot and Joe opens up the door and he's like, what the F did you just buy? And I'm walking to the hotel room and I'm like, oh, it's cross stitch stuff and there were these $5 grab bags and I couldn't resist and he's like, how the sh F are we supposed to get this home? And I'm like, that's why I packed an extra empty hard-sided suitcase. That's why I let the boys took their own suitcase as carry-ons because we don't do check luggage. I don't do checked. I don't waste my time with that. So it was perfect. Got it all home. Done. Um, did I purchase anything else while... Oh, needle minders love those ABC stores so they always have little trinkets and stuff so um, it's a refrigerator magnet I love Hawaii I put a needle minder back on it and this other one Harrison picked out Aloha super cute um, I think that is it. So I'm going to have some links down below for you guys to check out. I will be back sooner than a month because shit, if I can't go anywhere, I might as well just keep you updated with what I'm stitching and buying online. Which is not medical stuff, so don't worry about that. It'd be like shoes. Which, where am I going to wear them to? But at least then I'd have them ready to go. Um, if you have any questions or comments, 
leave them down below and thank you guys so much for taking the time and watching me subscribing and liking commenting all the great things um, after this i'm gonna add in a video of me walking around with fiddlesticks 2 in honolulu so hope you guys enjoy and make sure you check out 1884 stitchery fabrics by Catherine. The charity tab, 50% of all sales are going to Project Cure. Check that website out so you know exactly the great things that they're doing during this time. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Good. She'll be happy that she needs to make more graphics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, let me know when you want me out of the way. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Cause I'll just set this to music so it doesn't matter if there's talking in the background. boyfriend just called me he said they just he works he volunteers hours and hours and hours in the community garden mm -hmm. because they just closed the community garden i was like oh oh geez i thought that's where you would hibernate <laughs> now what <laughs> now what do i do Yeah, my nine-year-old thinks, like, everything's going to close down forever. He's like, well, what about, like, In-N-Out and McDonald's and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, it's just temporary. Yes. It's not forever. Yeah. Cool it. Yeah. Like, it'll be fine. Normalcy. Yeah, like, we went over to, before we headed out on the road, we just ran into McDonald's, and it's... It's all blocked off where you can't sit and Oh yeah yeah. It, it's everything is now to go. Yeah. Which is totally fine. You got them all done? No, I got two more. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Almost Easter. <laughs> it's coming up. Yeah. Did you have a question, Arlene? No, I'm going to go um, get something to eat. Oh, okay. You want something? No, well, she bought me a Bob's barbecue. Oh, okay. You better go eat it before it gets cold. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I can cold. I can nuke it. I'm okay.
Do you want something at McDonald's? Ice cream or? <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> no, because I get so antsy when I have to stay here. <laughs> you know what? It's really bad. I'm just like the children when they say, you cannot go out. I want to go out. I mean, I have a lot of cross stitch and stuff at the home. <laughs> but then when the weather was fine, I was cross stitching. Now yeah. when they tell you to stay home, I'm like, I have to go out. So I have to go down to the food 